The sun is squaring the moon, but we have a lot of beneficial aspects on the deeper side of the situation that are aiding you in getting past some sort of illusions, expanding uh, and growing, changing, integrating, and being more of your authentic self. Full moon in Scorpio. It's time to release negativity, okay? So the sun squaring the moon could really put some sort of negativity or negative aspects or things you're just not in alignment with anymore into full focus for you right now, okay? Hello everyone, welcome to your daily dose. Yes, thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So, this seems to be an evolved version of morning coffee. Um, I want to first and foremost give a shout out to all of you that provided me with some really awesome name suggestions. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, but I did settle on Daily Dose and now that I think about it, I don't remember who put it, who suggested it, but I read it, I saw it and I was like, yep, that works. So welcome to your Daily Dose. What is a Daily Dose? Well, the Daily Dose is going to be a combination of astrological transits from the sidereal, the true sidereal point of view. And we're going to combine that with tarot and oracle card readings for the day. Now, because we're gonna be talking about transits, there is a little bit of uh, timeliness that's going to be involved in this. However, you know, so the transits are only happening at a certain time period, right? Okay, but the energies of those transits are fairly, uh, long-lasting okay like I always say you don't there is no hard line between one energy and another it all flows together so depending on where you are in your journey depending on where you are in life or just depending on the energies for you this could be continuing throughout for the next few days or forever however long this this phase lasts for you okay but when we are talking about the transits here um, that is at a certain time period yeah Second thing I want to say before we dive into today's session is I want to give a massive, massive shout out to those of you that are still uh, with me on Patreon. Um, thank you so very much. I, I know that I have not been providing what I originally set out to provide on Patreon any longer. Um, I'm still working on shifting through that. As you guys can see, I'm in a big shift where I'm I'm changing lanes basically from being just a straight up tarot reader to an astrologer and a tarot reader as well. This is an expansion of my energy practice and my energy healing practice. And so as I'm going through this shift, it is really not, it is a very inopportune time for me to be providing the same services that I provided in the past because I'm in such a shift. So in some respects i guess you could say those of you that are supporting me on patreon monthly might be getting a little bit of a shit end of the stick but that might that might be how it looks on the surface but that's not really what's happening first of all the fact that you're still supporting me there is helping me to <laughs> to, to live and and continue to do this work as i go through this shift um and i am planning on getting back into doing regular things like this rather than just a daily session but I still have to work on defining how I'm going to do that for myself. So I'm in that process um, and I, I'm working through it. And as you can see, things are evolving. But I just, I want to give a massive shout out to all of you that are supporting me there. If you would like to support me and the channel and the content that I'm providing here, I recommend you checking out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Um, there is a ton of content out on Patreon right now anyway. So even if you were to get in on the situation now, you would still be able to have access to all of the past uh, readings that I have done there. And those readings, again, are just as timeless as everything else has been up until now, right? So even if it's like, say, for a month past or a few months past or, or just readings that I did a while ago, it could still resonate with you. So if you're new to me or if you're interested in checking that out, or at least if you're just interested in supporting me and the work that I do here, check me out on Patreon. Yeah. Alrighty, kids, let's get into today's session and see what we've got. Here we go. Huh. 
high spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and life circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys, so let's start with the energy of the what's going on cosmically. First of all, as I was connecting with the collective, I was seeing yellow. Obviously, I'm wearing a yellow shirt. Also, in uh, uh, in honor of Pride Month here, I am wearing one of my, that's a lot of my gay shirts. Sounds gay, I'm in. Yeah! Okay, anyway, so I was seeing yellow for the collective. Um, and it's actually kind of ironic, or or not ironic, but fitting that I'm wearing this yellow shirt today because... The focus right now is all about action and your willpower and your drive, but it's not necessarily about taking action right now. It's more about coming to an understanding of what action it is that you want or need to take in your life moving forward. So with that said, uh, the, con the, 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 the transit of the day or the energy of the day that I think is most important to pay attention to would be the sun squaring up with the moon. So I did write about this on um, my Instagram page yesterday. If you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and check that out at divine underscore conversations. But uh, the sun is squaring the moon and that started yesterday, the 1st of June. And that's going to be a major transit for our lives right now today or even for the foreseeable future because what I'm seeing within all of the, uh, the the planets right now is even though the Sun squaring up with the moon is a pretty difficult situation it can be at least in terms of your inner uh, your inner reality represented by the moon and your outer reality represented by the Sun um, kind of clashing with each other or maybe even be coming to odds coming being at odds with each other however within the deeper planets um, the, the planets that are further out there, the planets that represent your deeper reality and even collective energies. So that would be from Jupiter through Pluto, okay? Uh, there are a lot of supporting aspects between trines and sextiles with your personal planets being Mars, Mercury, the Sun, the Moon, that kind of stuff. Um, there are a lot of supportive aspects between trines and sextiles. Trines and sextiles are like uh, gifts, right? But especially with a sextile, both trines and a sextile, you have to consciously choose to work through that energy to gain the benefit of that, the, the, that aspect, okay? So there's a lot about your deeper reality that's coming into play here. And we talked about that when I talked about, you know, Mercury being in retrograde, yeah. Um, and if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely go ahead and check out that Mercury in Retrograde video. Uh, it is found on my channel. I can't, I will put a link in the description box. I'll also, um, oh shoot, I don't have my pen. I'll, I'll also, um, try to, well, just look in the description box for the link to that video. Um, but the sun is squaring the moon, but we have a lot of beneficial aspects on the deeper side of the situation that are aiding you in getting past some sort of illusions, expanding uh, and growing, changing, integrating, and being more of your authentic self. Okay, so with the sun square the moon, your inner and, reality, inner and outer realities are squaring off today, all right? At the very least, you may feel at odds internally with what has manifested in your life externally okay so there could be a discrepancy there what you're feeling what you're experiencing what you're well not what you're feeling but what you're experiencing and noticing or seeing in your external reality you may have the opportunity or you may be in a position today or at least in this energy moving forward however long this lasts for you because i do feel like for the most part a lot of this is going to last through the retrograde of mercury but 
Um, you may notice things that don't line up with who you truly are internally, what it is you really want internally, or how it is you feel internally. This sun square moon uh, face off basically could put into direct view what it is that you do not like about your reality or maybe even how it is you have changed internally and you will be able to notice that in that that internal change reflected in your external reality in terms of situations places circumstances maybe even relationships that now all of a sudden you're realizing no longer resonates with you okay and i'm sitting here uh, shuffling through the moonology deck and the first card that has come out here is full moon in scorpio it's time to release negativity okay so the sun squaring the moon could really put some sort of negativity or negative aspects or things you're just not in alignment with anymore into full focus for you right now, okay? So, but, oh, now, with that said, Mercury retrograde in Taurus, maybe a, th that, that time period, this energy, may be a really good time, it may be a really good time to take stock of what it is you truly value on a soul level because Mercury is retrograde through Taurus. Taurus is the second house. Taurus is your values, money, career, but basically your values, right? Well, not career, but money, possessions, um, how you make money, and what it is you value in your life. Okay, uh, this could be a re this is a really good time to take stock of what is truly what truly has value for you on a soul level, and take steps to manifest that if that is not present in your life. Okay, I wouldn't suggest taking too much action it may not it may be difficult to take action right now because of where mars is but we'll talk about that in a second but at least instead of really trying to take too much action use this time period as an intellectual time period come to an intellectual or at least a conscious understanding of what it is around you and how you may have shifted in relation to that okay now mercury is conjunct venus today and this really helps you with this focus. It may be easier than usual to get very mentally or intellectually clear about topics like money, career, values, love, and relationships. Not necessarily, well, yeah, love and relationships. But especially with Venus being in Gemini right now. So Venus just crossed into Gemini sometime yesterday, I believe it was. Um, Venus in Gemini is... I mean, Venus in Gemini isn't the worst. Um, it's it's great for connecting with your partners and your loved ones on an intellectual level. Um, but Venus in Gemini can be kind of flighty when it comes to relationships. But we'll get into that in a second. Also, supporting this energy of the sun squaring the moon right now, so your inner and outer realities squaring off at the moment, supporting this is a semi-sextile between Mars and Mercury which is opening a small door of potential to start developing a new path forward, okay? Maybe even a, now, a new path forward that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take that action right now. But with the yellow that I was seeing for the collective, your willpower and your sense of drive seems to be in the forefront of your focus or at least the, uh, has the potential to be put in the forefront of your focus and to really work through whatever comes up for you in that sense. Now, also supporting this is a semi-sextile between the moon and Saturn, which could give you the opportunity for developing a new sense of discipline or maybe even a new work ethic when it, in terms of what comes up for you intellectually right now, okay? Saturn semi-sextiling the moon is kind of opening a small doorway, should you choose to accept it, to say, to really think about how you want to put certain things into practice, put certain things into motion. Uh, again, get a new sense of discipline, how you want to re-discipline situations, how you want to shape things up. How do you bring whatever is coming through for you intellectually through this Mercury retrograde energy? How do you want to put that into practical application in your life, okay? Um, and then finally, what's helping this, in this section, we have... Uh, the potential for expansion and maybe even the addition of some universal luck with a trine between Jupiter, I'm sorry, no, yes, with a trine between Jupiter and the moon and Venus. So again, you have an opportunity 
to really work together with the deeper elements of your life <clears throat> to bring that into a greater sense of reflection, of authentic reflection externally, okay? Now, moving forward, the moon is conjunct Neptune, and that may be also, that'll, that could potentially help you here too, because that could be providing you with a heightened sense of intuition, or maybe just an unusual ability to see past any illusions that are coming up for your life right now. Please do not take this for granted. If your intuition is heightened at the moment, pay attention to that. Stay in alignment with that, okay? Let's pause for a second. Sorry guys, coffee is running straight through me already. All right, moving forward. The next major thing that I want to talk about right now is Mars, the, the transit that Mars just, uh, that, that, that Mars just went through. So Mars has transited into Cancer and Mars is debilitated in Cancer. We just went from Mars being in Gemini, which felt like a really frantic energy. It was a, is a very accident-prone energy, okay? But now we have Mars in Cancer, and Mars is debilitated in Cancer. Think about it this way. Mars is the ruler of Aries. Mars is direction, is action, is willpower. It, Mars is the, is the planet of war and confrontation. And Mars is the planet of the individual self, or can be seen as a planet of the individual self because Mars does rule Aries. Mars also rules Scorpio, but Mars rules Aries as well. So there's there's a lot of self-awareness or um, maybe self-reflection, okay? But then Cancer being the fourth house, Cancer is your stability, is your home life, is your family life. Cancer is an energy of nurturance, is a kind of a collective energy because Cancer is where, in, in the Zodiac, Cancer is where you start really thinking about others um, and your alignment with others and caring for others, nurturing others and, and, and your children and your family and all that kind of stuff, right? So when Mars gets into Cancer, there's there can be a direct opposition between your sense of self and your sense of community or your sense of family, your sense of home life, okay? So with that said, be careful at home during this period. Mars is going to be in Cancer until the 5th of July, okay? Mars is debilitated in Cancer. With all of this inner focus right now, especially this fo with, with the moon and the sun being conjunct, no, I'm sorry, being square, uh, square today, and all of this internal, deep, deep, deep internal energy of excavating what's, and just pulling up, getting down to the deeps, the, de the deepest depths of yourself, there is a lot of personal focus with all of this energy right now. All right, so that could leave people feeling quite agitated and on edge because like I said, with the sun squaring off with the moon, your internal and external realities are, are squaring off right now or kind of could be butting heads right now. And it could feel like you're being attacked on a personal level from, from you know, six ways sideways, right? So with that, that could leave people feeling on edge. That could leave feeling people feeling very vulnerable right now. And so that can cause tension at home. Please do not allow yourself to take out any tension or anger, frustration, agitation. Please do not allow yourself to take that out on your family or your loved ones, okay? The people that are closest to you, all right? Uh, there's one thing that did come through very specifically with while I was feeling through Mars being in Cancer, and that was militancy, okay? Be careful of militancy. Mars is the, is the warrior, right? So your home and family life are not basic training, okay? This is not a military situation. These are real human beings that need love and care and, and, and nurturance just as much as you do right now, all right? Your children are not grunts, okay? That's for someone out there. I don't know who, but that's for someone. With that said, though, now, with that said, yes, there may be a level of selfishness in the air, which is quite natural with these energies. Again, there's a lot of personal internal focus going on right now. So that's quite natural with these uh, with these energies, but obviously that's not fun to deal with, especially when you're dealing with children. And what I was getting with this energy is that children may actually be having a really difficult time it, right now, distinguishing between um, 
a sense of self and a sense of other. There may be, and it's not just children that are probably going to be having trouble with this. However, the younger your child is, the, the harder it is for them to going to be for them to understand how to distinguish, how to take the focus off the self for a second and think about another. But this actually could be a really good teaching experience for them. Just work with them, be caring, be nurturing, be as loving as you possibly can. Now, however, um, with Venus in Gemini, though, I will say this could be a really great time to connect with your loved ones on an on an intellectual level. All right. Um, yeah. And, and actually what came out when I started talking about Mars being in cancer, uh, what came out was uh, uh, the, the, the new moon eclipse. Expect powerful change. All right. So this if you use this energy right now correctly, this could be a really great time for change. Mainly I'm feeling I'm hearing on an intellectual level, on a conscious understanding level. So with Venus being in Gemini, if you were if like, say, in your natal chart, if you had Venus in Gemini, you value intellectual uh, sustenance when it comes to your relationships and romantic relationships. You may be more inclined to <laughs> get your rocks off more on connecting with someone on an intellectual level rather than on a physical level, okay? Or maybe even an emotional level, okay? Uh, like I said, Venus and Gemini can be kind of flighty when it comes to relationships. Venus and Gemini tends to often, you know, individuals with Venus and Gemini in their nail chart often tend to have um, many affairs or, you know, have trouble with relationships but you're so charming and 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 fun that you know people tend to not really be able to be mad at you for the while for that long but that's relative right but with that said venus and gemini gives us the opportunity to really be able to connect with our loved ones on an intellectual level so trying to get down to the bottom of what truly matters for individuals, how have value alignments changed or shifted with people, like within yourself, but also with your loved ones or those that are closest to you. You may learn new things about each other that can really bring your relationship to the next level, okay? Whether this is romantic, friendship, maybe even business, or just your family life, all right? But expect powerful change if you were to use this energy of Mars in Cancer, yes, but also Venus in Gemini, wisely, yeah? If there's anything else from this deck here, Moonology deck, I invite you to show yourself now. Otherwise, we are going to move forward towards the Tarot here. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, at the bottom of the deck is a new start is coming, new moon, but don't let your pride get in the way, all right? Cool. So let's get into some tarot with this. Um, I want to work with the witch's tarot right now. Yeah. So I'm going to give this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. What messages do we have for the collective at this time? Sun squaring the moon. Sun squaring. Ooh, take these. All right. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Four of Cups, which is an overall energy right now. So it feels like it feels like there are some things that you may have been 
bored with or tired of for the longest time, and yet you didn't allow yourself to move forward. You have the Ten of Swords that has come out in reverse here. So yeah, there are some things that have needed to come to an end for the longest time. It just has not been fulfilling for you, okay? But it seems now, with this Ten of Swords in reverse, this kind of feels like a past energy in terms of whatever situations or circumstances in your life that have needed to change or needed to come to an end. King of Swords is bringing that into full perspective for you. So with the sun with the sun and the moon squaring off right now, you have a very clear and open opportunity to see the past for what it truly is and to get the nuggets of wisdom if you want to move forward with that to actually put this to rest, okay? Yeah. So what's been hidden from you right now is the 10 of cups with the 7 of swords. I, I do want to get a little bit clearer on this, but um, something about your reality right now, or at least in this time period, something about your reality is going to come into focus in which you will be you will be on, be able to get the understanding, King of Swords, the clear understanding of how something that you thought was meant to be the ultimate emotional fulfillment or the ultimate family situation, something like that, something having to do with your ultimate wish, or ultimate emotional fulfillment or your family situation, something has been deceptive. It's not really as fulfilling as it seems. This has been hidden from you. And this is why you've, you have this 10 of swords in reverse here, but with the king of swords, it's time for you to, to come, to become clear on what it is that's truly needing to shift for you, what it is that's really needing to be released. It's time to release this negativity, all right? Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's look at the Ten of Cups with the Seven of Swords here. What is the Ten of Cups with the Seven of Swords? Yeah, this has to do with your family. This has to do with your home life. This has to do with your sense of stability. Um... Ah, there you go. The Ace of Swords. There's that clarity. There's the understanding. I'm hearing this is good. I, I just heard your intuition. So your intuition is probably going to help you a lot with this. Like I said, what was it? Um, the moon squaring. No, the moon conjunct Neptune. Yes, the moon conjunct with Neptune could be providing you with a, a stronger sense of intuition. Or, like I said, being able to see past the illusions. See past what the illusion of what you needed to bring to an end for the longest time, okay? We have a number of cards here. We've got, um, oh, look at that. You've got the moon with the four of wands, the nine of cups, but also the seven of cups. Okay, so the moon here is helping reveal to you what actually truly is going to give you a sense of stability, a sense of fulfillment. Okay, but there's confusion surrounding that seven of cups. And what I'm getting with that is you may be asking yourself or maybe you have been asking yourself what truly is going to make me happy or you have a bunch of stuff swirling around you that's basically creating a bunch of like haze or smoke or a smoke screen smoke and mirrors that's keeping you from truly seven of cups from truly understanding where your stability lies or where your sense of satisfaction lies okay that's all been hidden by the moon, but you have the opportunity to come to an understanding of that or to uncover that hidden element, okay? And you have all of that with the Six of Swords and the Knight of Swords, all right? So there's definitely energy, an energy of needing to fight to move forward or at least needing to cut away, cut away. All right, whatever is coming forward for you, whatever is becoming very clear for you on your path, yes, King of Swords, Ace of Swords, Three of Wands, have the confidence to face the shadow or to face the devil, the attachments, the codependency, the toxic ties, whatever, and allow yourself to cut that away. Because cutting this away for you is going to help you open up the doors of opportunity and go through a really beneficial, or in some cases, I just heard a massive transformation, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I do 
want to do one last thing before we close out this session here. I want to clarify, I want to get into the clarifiers, but I really only want to clarify this Knight of Swords energy, all right? So let's give this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. Now, this Knight of Swords, I'm also picking up that this Knight of Swords can be representative of this Martian energy, this Mars energy. Um, now, the Knights and the Pages, in my opinion, as a reader, represent the mutable signs. So this, the Knight of Swords would be representative of Gemini. And the ruling planet of Gemini is Mercury. Um, but I am kind of feeling a little bit of that militant energy or that, that, that <laughs> just that really strong and aggressive energy with the Knight of Swords. Instead of using this all willy-nilly just for fun or just for shits and giggles, Try and direct this Knight of Swords energy, whatever it is you're taking the action of cutting away, try and direct that towards cutting things away so that you can move forward from rough waters to calmer waters. Not necessarily using this edge or this aggression of the Knight of Swords to your personal advantage to get like one over on someone else. Yeah, last shuffle, five. All right, so uh, looking deeper at this Knight of Swords energy, please Spirit, what would you like to tell us about this Knight of Swords? Yep. Okay. This is definitely, this Knight of Swords energy is definitely a call to action, right? Because with this, you have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse to judgment. All right. So this is no more procrastinating is what I'm hearing with this. All right. Like it's time to start moving. It's time to take action. And what it is you're cutting away, you're cutting yourself free of Five of Swords, Nine of Swords energy. There you go. Five of Swords, Nine of Swords to the Six of Swords. All right, so you're cutting away lose-lose situations. You're cutting yourself out of situations that no longer serve you and also no longer serve other people. There could be an element of uh, enabling here just given the, circum the specific circumstances of what it is you'll be moving away from or cutting away, cutting yourself free from, okay? And that enabling could just be, you know, you remaining in a situation that's toxic for you and toxic for the other person, but because you're still in that situation, tangoing with it, dealing with it, involving yourself in, in, with it, putting your energy into it, you're enabling a toxic element within someone else as well. Five of Swords. And for some of you, actually, you are aware of that. Nine of Swords. It's causing you anxiety. And maybe you're not aware of that. Use this conjunction between the moon and Neptune to get down to the deeper elements of something to see past the illusion and maybe recognize how you have been enabling someone in some sort of toxic situation. But then use that wisdom and knowledge to move forward. Okay? Beautiful, you guys. We're going to close out this reading with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala. Yeah? Okay, five shuffles here, woo, one, two, three, four, Alrighty, kids, closing oracle guidance. Here we go. Makes perfect sense. We have card number 42, which does boil down to a six, okay? So six is a, is a harmonizing energy. Six is also an energy, in my opinion, of like home and family, right? And uh, the balance between give and take. But we have Goddess Hecate and Mika, Crossroads of Destiny. Mm. 
we, oh, sorry. we bring you the empowerment of crossroad of the crossroad of destiny. You are at a pivotal point on your life journey. This may be obvious to you with a potentially life-changing decision before you, or you may not realize that impact that an apparently insignificant choice is going to have on your future. Either way, you are at a point where you can leave the past behind and start or and chart your course for a new adventurous chapter to begin in your life. This is not something you need to be frightened of. It is a sign you are progressing on your path. The crossroad of destiny happens when you have mastered a cycle in your life and a new cycle is before you. It is an opportunity that you can take best advantage of by listening to your heart. Mars, and to be honest with you, as I was just reading, as I just said that last sentence, I heard Mars and Cancer actually could really help you with that. Because instead of just listening to your mind or listening to, you know, um, or focusing on like your past experience, how you've done things in the past, or maybe even how other people have done things in the past. Now with Mars and Cancer, you have a unique opportunity to really sit down and allow yourself to listen to what your heart is actually saying and to put that into action in your life. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, let me read this, this paragraph. Although you can rely on logic and analysis, and perhaps you wish to start where you start there if you're so inclined, it is through listening your, to your heart, the inner knowledge, uh, I'm sorry, the inner knowing and voice of intuition within that will bring you the most joyful experience. You can either play it safe or play it true. The heart will guide you to truth. The choice might scare you at first, or you might feel excited about what you feel your heart is asking you to do. Your mind may not understand and therefore create doubt, but the heart has its own wise genius beyond compare. It is the vehicle through which the divine plan is felt, and it is your flawless inner compass. This oracle comes to you with a message. Let your choices come from your heart. It feel, if it feels right for your heart and there is joy there, even if you have to search beneath all the what if something goes wrong fears of the mind to find it, then do it. If you have recently made such a decision and are waiting to see if the sky is going to fall in on top of you, this oracle affirms you have crossed the threshold into a new way and that it is time to leave the fears of the past behind you now. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for your, our next Daily Dose tomorrow. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye. Ha, 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 ha.